Okay, so quick, uh, uh, some of the terms that we should uh, run through uh, when we get to kind of the technical stuff. We started to talk about them on, the, on that site planning vignette, so let's, let's just kind of use, uh, use some of these terms correctly. Uh, one of them is you should have a very clear understanding of the difference between a survey, a plot plan, and a site plan. Uh, so a survey is a legal description. So uh, that is a very specific, uh, uh, has a very specific legal concept. It fits into the contracts, it fits into uh, the ways that uh, the different entities are, are working with each other, um, and it has a, a particular kind of meaning. Uh, and it, a survey can only be done by a surveyor, which is uh, a professional, so it's somebody who has their own stamp. Uh, and the reason that that's done so like a like because it sort of seems like well you could get anybody to just go out and measure and do a bunch of stuff right well no there's actually uh, very specific legal ramifications there's a lot of research that goes into it you have to uh, uh, sort of understand uh, the the way that uh, not just how the land where the borders are and how the land form is but how that fits into a overall legal context uh, if you actually read through your surveys, you'll be kind of amazed how much interesting information is on them. It's all kind of buried in there, so it's a little hard to know unless you really kind of decipher it. But um, the surveys, as I said, are legal and have a very particular uh, meaning, and they're from a particular person. They're from a particular professional. A plot plan is also a legal description, but it's not from a surveyor. So it doesn't carry the same weight. It's more of a legal description that's for kind of description, descriptive purposes. Uh, so, you know, you might do a plot plan. Maybe somebody says, "Well, what's on the site now?" And you you kind of draw out, "Well, this is what the what the uh, site actually looks like right now." Well, that's not a surveyor. That's not a professional whose job it is to do a legal description but it looks kind of like a survey. So you have to call it something, but you can't call it a survey, right? So that's a plot plan. A site plan, well, that's what you do, right? That's what architects do. Site plans uh, have their own uh, way of uh, representing information. So surveys are gonna be done in uh, usually in decimal feet, and at least in the United States. Uh, site plans are gonna be done in feet and inches, just as an example, right? There's different ways that we start to think about these things and how they, uh, this, the, the tool by which they get used. Site plans are gonna be about uh, a proposal, usually. Plot plans are gonna be about what's there, and surveys are gonna be about what's there. Uh, you can't do a survey for something that's gonna show up in the future. That doesn't make any sense. It has to be something they can survey, because they're legally saying, this thing is here, this fence is here, this building is here, this driveway is here. So, okay, that's just to say, don't get confused by the terms. If you have a multiple choice type of uh, situation going on and they're talking about it and they mention one, they say site plan, that's you. They say survey, that's somebody else. And kind of specifically, if they say survey, that's somebody else who's not even hired by you. That's somebody who's hired by the owner. So obviously when we're talking about these issues, we're, we talk a lot about zoning. We talk about site planning. There's gonna be lots of zoning issues. Uh, some of the terms that uh, are likely to show up are things like uh, zoning setbacks. So I might have a, a side yard setback or a rear yard setback or a front yard setback. And that's a way that the zoning allows for different approaches to, um, uh, to be able to create different types of districts uh, so that there are places where we want to have a lot of density, then we're going to have very small, if maybe even zero, on the setbacks. There are going to be places where we actually want to have less density, and those setbacks can be much larger. Uh, there's nothing sacred, there's no reason why a setback is uh, meaningful other than setting up that idea of the difference in density. And you do that in order to provide uh, different choice for people, in order to help increase uh, the um, likely uh, ability of a commercial district to work. Uh, if I have a very spread out commercial district, it may not work as well as if it's very dense. Uh, making uh, certain kinds of places where I really want to have, uh, for example, um, 
public transportation work. Um, I would want to have more density. If I'm not so worried about public transportation, then I could have less density. So the zoning is all about those kinds of issues. Telling you you can build on certain parts and not build on other parts. A couple things to say about that though. So we talk about something like a uh, zoning setback. Zoning setback will say something like, okay, there's a side yard setback of say 10 feet in a residential district. Does that mean you can't build anything in that 10 feet? Um, it probably means you can't build any primary structure in that 10 feet. It may well be that you can put a driveway. It may well be that you can even put a garage. It may be that you can put a gazebo. There's all sorts of things that often can be in the setbacks. So you have to be very careful about what the terminology is and what the definition is. Uh, another one that will show up a lot is the idea of the building limit line. And that's a term that doesn't really show up in the world that much. Uh, mostly you're talking about setbacks, but occasionally you'll talk about building limit lines. Um, and it's similar to a setback, but it, it'll have its own set of rules. On the vignette, there'll be a bunch of rules about what can fall uh, beyond the building limit line and what can't. Uh, obviously any building element can't fall beyond the building limit line, so I can't put a building there. Um, they're not going to give you a vignette uh, that requires you to, have, to understand um, accessory buildings or things like that. They might give you a multiple choice question that, that requires you to understand that, but they're not going to give you a vignette that would, uh, that would force that. Uh, so there are plenty of times when uh, things can happen beyond those lines, but you have to be very careful about what is allowed to happen. On the vignettes, it'll say. On the uh, question, multiple choice type question, you have to kind of read between the lines of what they're actually talking about. One uh, other thing that's kind of related to this is the idea of the easement. Uh, an easement is something that looks an awful lot like zoning, uh, but it isn't zoning. It's not a setback. It's not anything that has to do with the, um, uh, no municipality has said, uh, okay, here's an easement going through. An easement is a contractual relationship between a landowner and somebody else. It might be two neighbors who have a contractual relationship that says, uh, I don't have a place for a driveway, you have extra space, so I'm gonna make a deal, I'll pay you, uh, you still owe the land, but um, uh, there's this ability to, to use that space. It has a contractual meaning, but it is not part of the zoning department. So you are likely to get both of these things on both the multiple choice and on the vignette, uh, and you have to make sure you follow the individual uh, requirements, the restrictions that go with each of those. Mm -hmm.